You're living in a noisy world, a world where well-intended people are pulling you this way and that with their demands and their benign but blind expectations of you. To make the best of yourself, and to do so in a way that lasts, you're gonna have to quieten all that noise and then turn up the signal of your strengths. After studying lastingly successful people for many, many years, whether doctors or teachers, lawyers, salespeople, although if you line them up against the wall, you'd see just how very different they are, they do have one thing in common. They all focus on their strengths and manage around their weaknesses. I love startups. I like creating new things from a germ of an idea or um, a need that I see in the community and, and how is that going to work and you know, wh what's important about that and, and how do I leverage other relationships. Going into a workplace, you want to be able to be cognizant of the hierarchy, but you want to be able to voice what's important to you. You don't want to feel embarrassed or uncomfortable sharing your opinion, your strengths, your knowledge. So it has to be that right fit. And I, I don't think there's such a thing as an ideal setting. I think when I first started out, I just got along. I got along with the clients really well, and I had such a I mean, they just ran the gamut of personalities. And I had so much fun figuring out how to get the results that I needed, depending on their personality. So I just had fun with it. I don't really keep scrapbooks. I'm not a real memorabilia kind of person. But I looked through some of my work I had done in college and, and some of the work that I had actually done at that organization. And I started to see that I had value, that that what I, how I looked at things, how I approached things, how I kind of broke big things down into little pieces and how I taught, how I led, how I facilitated, how I managed was, was unique to me. That no one else did it the way that I did it. Not to say that I did it better or that they were wrong or right. It was never like a place of judgment that I stood, but I could see that I have talents that I don't have to work so hard at, that other people have to work a little harder at, but that come naturally to me. And that was a huge kind of aha moment. It was, it was really almost life-changing. You know, when I think of strength, I think of energy. And I think of those talents and skills that energize me. That is strength. If you're gonna build on your strengths intelligently, you're gonna to have to claim them as your own. You're going to have to add your own detail, drawn from your own life. As you make your own strengths journey, there is one critical definition that you need to know. Your strengths are not what you're good at, and your weaknesses are not what you're bad at. Obviously quite a challenge to build on your strengths if you don't know what your strengths are. And the funny thing is, most people aren't very clear about what their strengths are. In fact, if you ask people, describe your strengths to me, in a job interview, say, or even in conversation. Hey, what are your strengths? Have you ever noticed people's answers are very vague? In fact, we know by far the most common answer to the question, what are your strengths? By far the most common answer. You want to know what it is? I like working with people. I do. Just like working with people. I think because I'm also a person. In fact, I might also go so far as to say I'm a people person. I'm a people person. Me and people, we're just like this we are. We're tight, me and people. No mention of which people. No mention of what you're doing with the people. Just me and people. I'm a peoply person. Peoply, me, people person. That's me. And you want to go, come on, give me a verb. What are you doing with two or four the people? Are you educating the people? Are you selling to the people? Are you persuading the people? Are you taking care of the people? Are you inspiring? Just a verb. Any verb will do. Give me one verb. But I think we're vague about what our strengths are because we've been raised to believe that our strengths are what we're good at and our weaknesses are what we're bad at. Now stay with me on this because if your strengths are what you're good at, then you can't be trusted to define what your strengths are, can you? because you're not objective about what you're good at. Your teachers are going to tell you what you're good at. Your manager is going to tell you what you're good at. You can't be trusted. So most of us in our entire lives have been told, you can't be trusted to say what your strengths are. Someone else is going to come in and tell you. But I don't think that's a very good definition of a strength. A strength 
is what you're good at, and a weakness is what you're bad at. Really? A strength is the same as performance? Weakness is just bad performance? Re really? Because don't you all have some things where your performance is good? Some activities that you're really quite good at that you hate. Don't you all, every one of you, have some activities where you've got the ability to do it, it just drains you. You can do it, you just wish you never had to again. And as I'm saying this, I bet there's not a single person in the room going, I have no idea what he's talking about. I bet every one of you got something in your daily working lives or your home lives where you're really quite good at it, but if you never had to do it again, it would be a day too soon. What should we call that? What do you call something where you've got great performance and it depletes you? I'm going to suggest you go with the word weakness. I'm going to suggest the best definition of a weakness is an activity that weakens you, even if you're good at it. Whole careers have been built this way by confusing what you're good at with a strength. And yet there are a lot of people who have, a lot of people who so that were very good at pre-med in school, and they became a doctor, and they woke up at 40 years old and realized, wait a minute, I'm a doctor, but I don't like sick people. And they keep coming into my office, I fix one, and there's another one. There's a whole line of them out there, actually. No, a weakness is an activity that weakens you, even if you're good at it. A strength is an activity that strengthens you. What's important about defining a strength in this way is it means that you are by far the best judge of your own strengths and weaknesses. Your teachers, your managers, your parents, they're the best judge of your performance. But you, you're the best judge of your strengths. So if you want to make your greatest contribution, take responsibility for discovering and claiming your own strengths. Here are the four most obvious signs of a strength. In fact, you can use the acronym S-I-G-N, sign, to remind you of them. The S stands for success. There are certain activities where while you're doing them, you feel effective, you feel in control. Psychologists call this self-efficacy. That's the first sign. The I stands for instincts because there are certain activities where before you do them, you instinctively look forward to them. You positively anticipate them. Now, this doesn't apply to every activity. Obviously, there are some activities that you push off, you procrastinate, you want to hand them off to the new guy because it'll be developmental. The G refers to growth. There are some activities where while you're doing them, it's like your brain is growing. It's like the synapses are firing. It feels like time is speeding up and, and what maybe felt like five minutes, you look up and a whole hour has gone by. You have rapid learning. The N refers to how you feel after you've done the activity because there are some activities that fulfill a need of yours. After you're done with it, you may be tired. You may not be quite ready to saddle up and do it again, but you're not drained. In fact, you're fulfilled. So pay attention to those signs. They're a great clue to where your strengths lie. Of course, we all have activities in our life that drain us and bore us and drag us down. No one's life is a perfect fit between them and their strengths. Well, I, you know, I'm not a budget person. I mean, you know, I'm not a number cruncher. You know, I'm better because I've had to do it and I've had to figure it out and I've asked questions and I've forced, but it's not my natural suit. Just doesn't come, you know, when stuff is on my desk, that's probably one of the things I don't, I have to plan time to look at that. You know, I have to schedule, okay, I'm gonna do this in, you know, in half an hour. So I force myself to do it, it's not a natural. And I would describe a weakness as swimming upstream against a strong current. It's hard, it feels uncomfortable. What I might not do well, I might look at another person who is easily accomplishing it, it's their strength. And so for me, the difference between strength and weakness truly is if you're playing in your strength, you're feeling energized, passionate, it is fulfilling you. I remember eating my breakfast in the morning, drinking a cup of coffee, literally throwing up in the kitchen as I was walking out of the door, and my husband looking at me and going, oh, sweetie, 
try to have a good day. <laughs> Another weakness I had that I needed to overcome very early on is I hate to speak publicly. Um, hated to speak in front of groups uh, in college, hated to give reports, and yet so much of what I do is speaking to large groups and speaking to my staff, and I think it's something that I needed to find a way to overcome that weakness. Well, you're never going to be able to turn your weaknesses into strengths, but there are certain strategies that you can use to manage around them. Here are the four most obvious strategies. You can think about them with the acronym STOP, STOP. Here the S stands for stop doing it and see if anyone cares. You can't do that with every activity, of course, but you might at least try that before you move on to anything else. At least keep your mind open to the fact that there are certain activities that you could slough off and no one would even notice. The T stands for team up. Everyone's wired a little bit differently, aren't they? There's probably someone on your team who's invigorated by the very things that drain you. Can you partner up with one another and become more powerful together? The O stands for offer up. Can you deliberately offer up one of your strengths? Can you deliberately volunteer one of your strengths until it becomes so sharp, so focused, so valuable that people keep asking you to do it and there's no time even for you to pay attention to those things that weaken you? Can you take the best of your job and gradually turn it into most of your job? The P stands for perceive. Can you deliberately perceive one of your weaknesses through the lens of one of your strengths? I'm weakened and drained by confrontation. It, it, it really drags me down, but I'm invigorated by inquisitiveness. I love asking why. So if I can look at any confrontation through the lens of my inquisitiveness as a chance just to ask why questions, I may never turn that weakness into a strength, but I will at least look at it differently so that it doesn't drag me down. I suppose it actually should be stops, because there is a final S, isn't there? With the final S standing for suck it up and do it, because nobody's job fits them perfectly. In fact, probably for you, in the best of all worlds, you'll have a job where 25% of your job is just stuff you have to suck it up and do. So if you want to manage around your weaknesses, if you want to take control of your working world, try one of those five strategies captured in STOPS. If you ask women between the ages of 25 and 55, which do you think you should focus on the most? Building on your strengths or fixing your weaknesses? Only 30% of women say, building on my strengths. Most women, according to these data, spend most of their lives identifying their flaws and their failings and then working diligently to fix them, which is noble, but it's clearly not the most effective way to express the best of yourself. It's, it's not the best way to make your greatest contribution. We all know that we have something special inside of us, something unique and distinct to offer the world. So why do we spend so much of our lives either ignoring what is the best about us, or even worse, characterizing ourselves by who we are not and working so hard to fix it? Why are we so confused? Why do we spend more time focusing on our weaknesses than we do on our strengths? I don't know. Maybe you've got your own theory. Maybe you've got your own idea about that. If I show you that data, maybe if we sat down over coffee or something today, you'd, you'd have your own idea about why that is so. I, I guess I'd just give you one thought around it. That maybe, maybe we are more fearful of our weaknesses than we are honoring of our strengths. So maybe, let's say I, let's say I hire you I'm, I'm your manager, I'm your sales manager, let's say. I bring you on board, and I discover that you have real strength in organization. You're very structured, you're very uh, organized and planned. You do what you say you're going to do, that's great. But you're weak in the area of um, engaging people. You're not very good with people. You don't read and write, you're not very perceptive. So you show up to every meeting on time. It's just that everyone wishes you weren't there. Okay, so I'm your manager, I don't have unlimited time, I'm gonna go, look, I don't have to worry about this over here, you're fine, you're fine over here, but over here, ooh, you rub people the wrong way. So I'm gonna go, I'm fearful of what this weakness could do to you. It could hurt our customers, it could hurt our clients, it could hurt your colleagues, it could hurt the team, it could hurt you and your career, and I'm a good guy, I want you to have a good career, this could hurt your career. I suppose it could hurt me too, I'm your manager, I don't want you to look bad. I hired you. So, so if I think about my limited amount of time, I'm going to go strengths, organized, fine, weakness, ah! You know someone's fear, you'll know their need. That's what they say in psychology, right? You know their fear, you'll know their need. Okay, I need to fix this. If 
for everything that I just described in terms of the fear that comes with it of what your weakness could do to harm you. And this fear gets ingrained in us very early, doesn't it? The fact is, if you ask parents this question, your child comes home with the following grades, English A, Social Studies A, Biology C, Algebra F. Which grade deserves the most attention from you? It turns out that 77% of parents say the F. Most children around the world are characterized by the people who love them the most, by who the kids aren't, rather than by who they are. And this isn't done for harmful, mean reasons, but for all the best reasons in the world. We do it because we want our kid to win, and supposedly you can't win if you get an F. And this continues in the working world, doesn't it? You go to your first performance review, heck, you go to every performance review, and it's two minutes on what you did well last year, and then 58 minutes on your areas of opportunity, where area of opportunity is simply a nice way of saying stuff you're not good at. I mean, the sad truth is that most conversations at work are around what you're bad at, what you're struggling with. For you to make the best of yourself in this life, you're gonna to have to unlearn all of these remedial lessons and learn a new lesson. You have as an individual areas of opportunity. But for every one of you, your greatest areas of opportunity are your strengths. You have strengths. Which are your areas of opportunity? You will grow the most, learn the most, develop the most in your areas of strength, and then you have challenges. Some challenges you have to deal with, which you've got to deal with. But don't call them areas of opportunity. They're areas of least opportunity. Areas where you'll grow the least, learn the least, develop the least. Be least creative, least resilient. You as an individual will learn and grow the most in the areas where you already have some natural advantage. For those of you that are interested in this kind of thing, it's because of the way the brain grows. When you learn, when you develop, new synapses are formed in your brain, and it just turns out that it is easier for your brain to grow new synaptic connections in the areas of your brain where you have the most pre-existing synaptic connections. In other areas of your brain, you can carve new synapses. It just takes a lot more effort and energy and is much less efficient. The neuroscientists say that learning is like new buds on an existing branch rather than new branches. Whether you're in a, a lean-in circle, or whether you're in the standout platform, or, or whether you're just doing this on your own, your challenge is twofold. First, identify in your own words, in detail, what makes you unique. And then second, figure out each week how to take that uniqueness and make it useful. Because then, and only then, will we see the best of you.